Hello everyone, Benjamin Lindsay here, Managing Editor at Backstage. Um, we are being joined today by Phoebe Dinover, the star of Bridgerton on Netflix, which just this morning was picked up for season two, so we have plenty to talk about. Very excited to be uh, spending time with her, pick her brain on the casting of the series, how she built the character, um, and just her acting career and advice in general. So let me see if she's here and ready to join us and then we can get this show on the road. Hi. Hey there. <laughs> how are you? Hello, I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Uh, my name is Ben. I'm managing editor here at Backstage. It's so great to meet you. It's lovely to meet you. Yeah, so so good, good evening, I guess. You're calling in from, yes. from your home in the UK, I assume. Yes, I'm in Manchester right now, so it's, yeah, it's about 4, 4 p.m. Yeah, how, how's it looking over there? How's the state of things? It's not great. Yeah, it's not great right now. We're still in lockdown. Um, yeah. It's pretty intense. So yeah, just long walks every day. Keep the, keep the blood yeah. pumping. <laughs> long winter walks. I, yeah. I've definitely embraced that myself in Brooklyn. So. Yeah. Is that, oh, that's where you are right now. Oh. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but glad to see that you're staying well, at least. Um, t taking care of things, taking care of yourself. And um, I mean, c congrats on season two of Bridgerton. That, that news just broke this morning. So I congratulations know. on that. So um, excited. Yes, of course, of course. But I, I assume that production won't be starting in the coming weeks or anything. Do you have a have a map or a, t a time plan for that? No, not yet. I mean, there's vague rumors, but um, yeah, I think they're in production right now. So we'll see. Hopefully, over the coming months, um, maybe through summer. Who knows? Yeah. So yeah. We're still waiting on that information. But um, yeah, fair, can't fair wait enough, to just enough. know that it's happening. And yeah. yeah. Well, definitely exciting. Um, and it, it must be kind of a, a strange time to be celebrating this massive series. I mean, it's been out for a month, 63 million viewers in its first four weeks. Um, and know. you need to be at home and just kind of watch as it goes by. But what, what's it been like for you? Has it yeah. been pretty surreal? It has. It's been really surreal. I think, yeah, the last few weeks have been crazy. And especially because, you know, we're all at home and and so everything's over Zoom or, or Instagram or yeah. you know, whatever. But it's it's lovely at the same time because I think, you know, it's nice being at home with my family and getting to enjoy the buzz with them. Um, so there's, yeah, there's nice, there's, there's nice, there's a nice side to it, I think, in that respect. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it was great for me. I mean, I, I watched the thing, my partner and I just... Uh, binged right through it over Christmas so uh -huh. it, it's definitely the kind of show that I think people can sit down and enjoy right now which people should really be taking uh, for should not be taking for granted rather um, yeah exactly it's a value it came out at a great time I think we were so lucky in that sense that you know it came out at a time when people really needed an escape and it really is that it's such a it's such an escape from our world right now and yeah this crazy world that that we were able to create which is you know thrilling and and such a feast for the eyes and yeah it's i'm really happy that it's brought joy to people's lives right now absolutely absolutely well um let, let's get to the beginning of it then um this mm. obviously is an incredible character for any actor to play and you do such a magnificent job with her um what was the audition process like for daphne and um, how did you ultimately kind of land the gig? Yeah, so I sent a tape off, as as most actors do. I just sent a self-tape. Um, and then I think a week later, I, I taped for another role. They asked me to put myself on tape for another role, so I did. Um, and then I didn't hear anything for about three months. And I was living in LA at the time, and then suddenly I sort of get a call saying, will you come in and meet Chris Van Dusen and Betsy Beers at Shondaland? Mm -hmm. um so I met with them we sort of read through the scenes and then a few days later they said will you come and read do a chemistry read with reggae um who they'd already cast as Simon uh mm -hmm. so yeah so I went in sort of a few days later and read read with reggae read Shonda Shonda Rhimes was in the room which was um very daunting and exciting <laughs> I imagine <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was it was me and Reggae and, and Shonda and the director, Julianne Robinson and Chris Van Dusen, our showrunner in the room. And I don't know, there was something quite, you know, it felt good and it felt, um, it felt, there was something exciting about that 
Mm. There was something exciting about reading with him. There was, you know, I think with acting, sometimes there's something quite and intangible. You can feel a chemistry. Mm -hmm. And I felt that. But as an actor who obviously is used to a lot of no's, I think you push that aside and say, yeah. <laughs> It might not, it might not be the one, but yeah, the next day I, I got a call saying, it's yours. Can you fly out to London in like a few days? And it was, yeah. And then it was sort of a whirlwind, whirlwind from there. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Like, That's often months. the case. You're kept waiting for a few months and then you're just flying by the yeah. seat of your pants. <laughs> you're just yeah, going. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's so interesting that uh, you kind of felt that spark in the beginning. It felt good. Um, the chemistry between these two leads was obviously essential to the success of the story. So how do you go about examining that relationship and building that chemistry over time uh, mm. with the scene partner? Yeah, I mean, I think um, we we were really lucky in the sense that we had like six weeks of rehearsal time mm. and uh, before we started shooting, which was amazing, really. And, you know, it's not often that you get that time. So that was we really cherished that. And we had so we had to do so many dances throughout the throughout the show so a lot of our time was spent rehearsing rehearsing the the amazing sequences that you see mm -hmm. uh and really trying to get that right and so we spent a lot of time you know in the in rehearsal rooms and i think that you know it really it, it really helped form a chemistry yeah and there's definitely something to be said for for having a dancing partner and trusting each other and having to create something together, which then really informs the performance, I think, in a way. So, yeah, that really helped. And and all the, we did a lot of intimacy coordination as well, which we, mm -hmm. which we rehearsed before we started filming. And, and that was really informative. And I think it just enabled us to feel really safe around each other. Like there was no you know, we formed a friendship, we formed a, a working bond, and we both felt safe within that. And we talked a lot about what we wanted out of it. And yeah, I think just having all that time is such a gift. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a lot of that. And and the right and the writing is just amazing. And a lot of it's in the writing, to be honest, and the wonderful music that you hear over the yeah. top. <laughs> Yeah, the writing, the music, the costumes, the sets. Yes. I mean, everything is everything. like as good as it could possibly be. It's great. Yes, I um, know. What a team, yeah. I, I am interested. Uh, I mean, th this idea of intimacy coordination, that's really only been a part of the industry as a as a normative kind of kind of role on set for the last yeah. few years. Was this your first time working in that kind of space? Yeah, it was. It was my first time working with an intimacy coordinator and it was a brilliant experience. I felt so safe and it just really felt like a stunt. You know, you rehearse mm -hmm. a stunt so that no one gets hurt. Yeah. It looks good and looks really real, but no one, no one gets hurt or injured. And it's very much like that. You're rehearsing it so everyone feels comfortable and no one, you know, there's no line that can ever get crossed because right. you're very specific on what you're doing um and also it just makes everyone feel comfortable not just the actress but the actor and the crew members and you know i just think it it makes for a safer space and therefore you can you can let loose a bit more mm -hmm. and, and feel freer within that role that you're playing so it was so helpful i've i've done you know, intimacy scenes without a coordinator in the past. And it's a very, very different experience. So mm. yeah, I just, I just hope that it sort of becomes a necessity really that, that you sort of have to have. Yeah. Um, yeah. That for everything. Yeah. I, I love hearing that. I mean, at, at the end of the day, it just allows everyone to do their best work. Everyone is comfortable. Yeah. There's no, there's no fear going mm. into scenes that are a bit more revealing in that Absolutely, way. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Um, well, backstage, uh, a lot of us in the audience today are kind of the working actors of the world. Mm -hmm. I'd also just to love, or I'd also love to hear a bit about just your process in kind of building this character. So yeah. you're, you're, you're along with the script for the first time, for instance, what is it that you do as an actor? What are the little tricks that you do to kind of decide what Daphne is going to look like on screen? Yeah, Daphne was interesting because a lot of it was sort of, her attending balls and this mm -hmm. outer outer sort of shell that she portrays to the world which is sort of this perfect diamond or, or whatever so mm -hmm. I think um we were really lucky in that I, I 
we rehearsed all that sort of stuff. We did a lot of etiquette and um, our, our, our choreographer would talk about posture and all of those things were, were something that we rehearsed and, and got right and figured out. And then for me, it was just really important to know what was happening underneath all that for Daphne and, and what she really, what was really going on when she was mm -hmm. doing all these things. And, so and yeah, granted, she's a little confused too about what she wants so and what. Confused and, <laughs> yeah. and naive and vulnerable in so many ways. Um, she, you know, she's this is her going out into the real world for the first time. So it was finding that innocence and that strength um, that she has as well um, that I think was really important. And again, really lucky, got the first six scripts pretty soon into it. So I was able to just sort of plot her journey because she has such an amazing story arc as well. Mm -hmm. She sort of goes from the really naive and innocent and uncertain about this big wide world to, to a married duchess. Well, I hope, I'm, I hope no one's watching this, <laughs> but you know, she becomes, she, she becomes a woman essentially. So yeah. it was really important to get that journey right and make it feel honest and, and real and not, um, not animated you know it was this mm -hmm. is a real human being who's has fears and um worries and so i played a lot with the ang anxiety underneath that as well there's always something her heart sort of beating out of her chest in every scene because it's yeah it's quite a nerve-wracking thing to be you know bowing to the queen and everyone having you know everyone looking at you and um trying to find a husband i mean it was quite there was quite a lot of pressure placed on them so yeah, it was finding that as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned that, I mean, she's bowing to the queen, for instance. A lot of these feelings yeah. that she might be feeling, you have to play as if it's the first time that she's feeling them. I mean, there is an innocence there, but then to see the way that it's charted through the season, to uh, see the conversations that she ultimately has with Simon, with her mother, she she is yeah. like coming into her own in a really powerful way. Um, yeah, so, so that's that's great to hear that you're able to map it out with those early scripts. Um, yeah, kind of, it was yeah, great. Yeah. And it um, was, as well with the intimacy stuff, um, we were so specific with those scenes because it really is about telling her story and her sexual awakening and understanding mm -hmm. what all those things are and what they mean. So every intimate scene, we really wanted to get right in terms of telling the story and what we wanted to portray. Mm -hmm. So that was another piece of the puzzle that that was really helpful to really rehearse beforehand. Yeah, it wasn't just the physical, it was the emotional of this mm. is the first time. Yeah, like, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, well, I'd love to hear a bit more about uh, kind of your roots in the performing arts, because my understanding is that your father's a screenwriter, your mother is or was an actress. So has working in television, working in the performing arts, has that always kind of been the, the journey for you? Or how did they first start playing a role in your life? Yeah, I mean, I think people, I've always found people in the arts just really fascinating. And every everyone in my family has a weird leg in the industry, which is interesting. Mm. My grandpa was a was a director and my grandma was a was a third AD. So there were, you'd always hear stories growing up just of being on set and of actors. And mm -hmm. that was, I think, the first thing that actors just seem like really fascinating people and I just really remember the stories that my my parents would tell of of these amazing actors and and that so yeah and then it was just sort of figuring out okay what is what is this what what part of this business do I want because I really mm -hmm. wanted to be a part of this family I think I just heard that you know all these talented people coming together to make something Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. such an exciting thing you know it's not not just the acting but whatever part you are of making a production especially something like Bridgerton there's so much talent and they're all coming together to make this beautiful thing so that was really exciting and then I just yeah started falling in love with films and yeah <laughs> and watching my mom I went to see her on set a bit and yeah and so yeah the the bug the bug kicked in pretty early and by 13 it was that was it I was gonna be an actor and no one was stopping me. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. And th through that time, I mean, I, I know that you have credits dating back to 13, 14 years old. Um, did you go through any like proper training program or take acting classes or is it kind of just been through osmosis that you're picking up on what works for you as a performer? 
Yeah, it's been a lot of that. I know I always, I was thinking about going to drama school when I was about 18, but I luckily got, you know, I, I got a part in something and then got a part in something else. And then suddenly I was like, maybe I should just see where this takes yeah. me instead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's been a weird journey. I've spent a bit of time in LA and a bit of time in New York and I'll attend, and even in London, I'll sort of attend the odd, odd class. I've attended little classes and stuff, but never had proper training no which is is always interesting especially in england because a lot of the actors you're working with have had mm. training yeah so yeah it's interesting but you learn so much on the job i think and oh absolutely yeah it's i learned i mean even something like bridgerton i learned so much just making that show so yeah just just soaking it in i think um however you can yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you, you gotta be a sponge in those situations and yeah, learn absolutely. what works for you along the way. Yeah. Yeah. But you've you've also said, I mean, as recently as a couple of years ago, you said that uh, you weren't finding the the success that you wanted. You put a lot of pressure on yourself. Yeah. Um, how how do you professionally? How have you kind of pushed through any self doubt that comes with the the peaks and valleys of an acting career? Yeah, it's funny. I did go through a stage of, of being, even like right before Bridgerton. And I, I it, it, yeah, it is. It's funny. There's so many peaks and drops. There's so, many, so much rejection. And to be able to be an actor and have really thick skin and also be able to emote is quite a difficult thing mm. to do. And so yeah. it is about, <laughs> it is about just, I don't know. I think... Uh, when things started changing for me, it was like, I'm not going to go in and sort of try and beg for a job. I'm just, I'm going to start going in and just thinking, I'm just going to give you what I think's right. And either you like it or you don't. Mm -hmm. And that was a little bit of a turning point for me when I just thought, sort of, you know, fuck it. Like, yeah. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do what I think's right. And I'm, and that's fine. And that they either take it or they don't. Um, it's something about, I mean, there's something to be said for like playing a bit hard to get in that, in those situations mm -hmm. where it's like, uh, you have to go in thinking I've, you know, I think this is right and you either take it or leave it, but I'm not desperate for the job, which is obviously really difficult when you're, you've got pill, bills to pay and mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to do, but it, it really does, it really does make a difference, I think. Um, yeah, if you, if you go in, to, I mean, you obviously need a hunger for it, but there's a difference between that and a desperation for it. And I think Absolutely. if you can go in and uh, f feel like you can live without it, then that's the time that you are putting your, or positioning yourself to get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's definitely a value. Um, well, kind of in line with this, again, the backstage audience being some of those early career folks, what is a piece of advice that you would give your younger self when you were first getting your start? Ooh, I'd say, I'd say just keep going because it, it's funny, but it's only when you get a bit of, you know, when you actually start working or get a bit of success that you look back and you go, oh, I didn't get that because it wasn't right and it wasn't the right time. And mm -hmm. I feel like it will come at the right time. You just have to keep going and you have to keep believing in yourself and, and don't try and change for anything because what makes you unique is what's going to get you a certain part. It just has to be at the right time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, timing is, is a lot about the industry being in the right place at the right time. So just, just keep going and be resilient and, and learn your craft in whichever way you can. Um, but know that it will come when it, when you're ready, um, it will come. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Well, as a final question for you, then, thank you again for spending some time with us today. Um, I mean, I, I just got the email in my inbox before this conversation with the season two renewal. So congrats yeah. on that. Thank what do you, you hope to see um, for Daphne's journey just looking ahead to this new season? Yeah, I mean, I, I hope she gets involved in Anthony's love life as much as he. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> does. Yes, fair enough. I think that's one. And then I think, yeah, love is love is very complex and it's never necessarily a happy ending there's always challenges to face along the way so i think that 
probably will be more um and i hope to explore those uh so yeah that would be fun as well there we go well i know that uh there's more than just me excited for this new season the whole world's waiting so uh uh yeah congrats on the season thank congrats you. on season two and uh thank you again stay Thanks well so much take care all right bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.